Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to talk about how head tracking works. This is something that a couple of subscribers have asked about, and in one of the other videos that we have on the channel, we've actually gone through the trouble of actually setting this all up. So you can see this head tracking system work with a little gimbal. This is the gimbal that we used in that video, and um, as you can see, as you move the goggles about, then the gimbal's working too. But how does that all put together and how does that all work? That's a question I've had from a couple of subscribers over the past week or two. So what I wanted to do was put this video together because I know if two subscribers have taken the time to ask the question, there will be lots of other people out there who would like to understand how this works in practice. So what we'll do is we'll go through each part of the system in turn and show you how they all connect together. We're going to use the head tracker, which is going to go on the goggles. That is going to plug into a radio. The radio is going to send those signals off to a receiver on the craft. And that receiver is going to be plugged into some form of gimbal onto which the camera is mounted. So we'll go through each of those pieces in turn. So we'll start at the very beginning with our friend, the head tracker. So here's a little diagram. What we'll do is we'll actually build the system in slides as well to keep track of what we're talking around. So the head tracker is available in lots of different types. These can be part of the actual goggles themselves internally and just a cable comes out the side. Or they could be something like this that you can buy from places like Hobby King. These are really cheap and cheerful. You can just stick them with Velcro onto existing goggles and they'll give you the head tracking function. You can also build them. There's actually plans on the internet and I'll link to those in the description as well. And this is one that I've actually built with an Arduino Nano, a little sensor board and even a little reset button on the top. And these actually live on top of my quantum goggles. There, you have to supply them with power so the Arduino is running and then you also have a cable to plug into the radio and that's exactly what we have here. So again we have our head tracker function, we have a cable that goes to the radio and these cables are different, depends on the radio type that you have. These 3.5mm jacks that we have here are actually useful for Tyrannus and Spectrum and JR radios. Other radios have different connections and other radios also with the more complicated connections could also supply the power as well. The problem that we have using a JR Spectrum or Tyrannus lead like we have now is that it only just sends the signal so you have to actually power it separately. However, that being said, what these head trackers do is they operate just like the sensor board inside a flight controller for a multicopter. So it's sensing tilt, roll in all three axes. And that tilt and roll is converted into a signal as though it was a stick on the radio and then sends those pulses down using PPM typically down into the radio itself. So out of the side of this then is coming positional information about how it's tilted up, down, left, right, side to side, and tilted that way too. So the next thing we need in the system then is obviously we're going to need our radio. Now the radio has to have seven channels for head tracking if you're going to use it with something like a flight controller. The reason for that is we're going to use five for basic flight operation. So we need one for the throttle, two for the rudder, three for the elevator, four for the aileron, and we need one for the flight mode switch as well. That's five channels. Then we need another two, ideally for the two main servos that are in the gimbal. Now the gimbals can be very different. This is a really cheap and cheerful one, again from Hobby King, this one. Uh, this one provides the pan function and also a tilt function too. So we're going to need two servos, which means we're going to need an extra two channels, one channel to run each of them. So this on this radio is going to be fine. This is a seven channel radio. I'm going to use five for the flight controls and two extras for those two servos. And the way it works is that you plug the head tracker into the back of the radio. Most radios will have some kind of port at the back, um, ideally called something like DSC, and that is used to connect the radios together when you're using something called trainer function. Now trainer function is where the radio will listen to a separate radio that's plugged into it and allow you to give control to that other radio briefly. So if you're teaching somebody to fly, you can maybe be flying along and what you can do is give control over to the other radio and then when the student gets into trouble, you can take control back, recover the craft and then give it back to them. This is using exact same trainer style functions with a head tracker so that the signals that are coming out of here for the tilt and roll and the position of the head tracker appear in the radio as additional control inputs. So it's almost like having, as well as these two normal sticks on the radio, a third one that's actually controlling exactly how you want the camera to look. But that's all done via the head tracker. 
So inside the radio, what you do is you configure the trainer function and you then pass through the channels that you're interested in from the head tracker out of the radio over the wireless link into the receiver. Now this is all covered in the setting Tyrannus video that we've actually all done. If you want to know more about that and show how it's set up on a Tyrannus so that you can actually do this, then that video goes through every single step. Again, I'll link to that in the description if you want to know more. So now we've got the wireless talking to the receiver, then the next thing we need to do is we need to then talk to the servos. So the servos themselves just connect into the receiver via any of the spare outputs that you've got configured. So you might configure a radio so that channels 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are used for flight controls to your flight controller and then maybe input 6 is used for your tilt servo and input 7 is used for your pan servo and you'd actually have it plugged in like this. So now as the head tracker is sending information to the radio, the radio is then sending that up through to the receiver and the receiver is then driving these two servos to move the camera around and look in the same direction as you're looking with the goggles. So let's just go through that system again very, very quickly and just talk about each of those links just to kind of make sure everyone understands what we're doing. So the first link in the chain is the head tracker is going to talk to the radio over PPM typically. Now you can normally connect to the head trackers and configure the head tracker on which radio channel it's going to send the data out of. So with these things, um, again in that head tracker video, you can actually see that we're sending the head tracker data out on which channels. You then pick those channels up in your radio, configure the trainer, and then you send that out. Once you've assigned the channels to the receiver, then obviously the channels go across the wireless link just like it would with any other system. And then on the other end, what you have is you just plug in the servos into the receiver and the servos move in the right way. Now, in each of these stages, obviously, things could potentially go wrong. You could have the servos moving back to front. And the fun is in the radio, what you do is use the menu systems to reverse the channels or the signals that are coming in from the head tracker or potentially even going to the software for the head tracker itself so that when you move left to right goggles, the camera moves left to right. When you move your head down, the camera moves down, etc. The other thing you can do as well is you can just change how much of the control input you're getting from the head tracker via the radio menus which means that the camera is moving the same amount as the goggles and that takes a little bit of iterative work to get it perfect um, because when it's perfect you don't notice it. If you're noticing the camera isn't moving enough or too much then it isn't set right. So hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to do this in future or trying to understand how it all works together. Now it's a whistle stop tour of the basics of how head tracker system works there are lots of other variations and complexity that can go on top of this, but now at least you understand the basics. When you're looking at those systems, you can understand what additional bits they're offering. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.